So I'm Ian Corby, I'm the Executive Director of the Age Verification Providers Association. So we are a global trade body representing 26 different providers of age assurance technology. That's both the traditional age verification and then the newer age estimation software. Um, and I'm here because um, I do a lot of work in standards which we think are going to be the best way to try and align the, the world's approach to age assurance because otherwise you find every different country legislates in a slightly different way for every product or service or slightly differently for how they want to protect children's data for example. So the biggest challenge in defining standards is to keep them technically neutral. Uh, it's very difficult not to be sort of uh, to fall into the trap I think of just creating a standard that requires you to do age verification in one particular way and would um, prevent sort of innovation and uh, new, new methods coming through. So trying to write standards in a technically neutral way but which still deliver the sort of the core principles that we want around data privacy and security and obviously effectiveness of actually getting the age as accurate as you need it for that particular purpose um, still need to be built into the standards but they shouldn't constrain companies who are trying to develop solutions um, so that some you know, perhaps amazing new idea that nobody's thought of yet uh, would not be allowed by a particular standard. So if you're an organisation that wants to comply with um, the emerging rules and regulations, um, the first problem you've got is keeping up to date with everything that's happening. So e even as a trade association, we struggle to keep an eye on 50 different US states, what's going on in India or Australia or New Zealand, where you know, things are changing all the time. Yeah. Um, now, you can pay expensive lawyers to help you with that. And, and, and obviously, if you've got the wherewithal to do so, then we'd recommend that. We can't offer legal advice, and I don't think providers of age verification services would want to do that either but they do have a lot of experience in the market and so they will be able to help you and advise you um, about being compliant in in the markets where you want to be compliant it's almost impossible to claim you're compliant everywhere um, we might leave that problem to Meta and to, to Apple to deal with but for most you know, small businesses that are just trying to sell their products in one or two countries we should be able to help them stay compliant in those areas. So technology is you know, obviously uh, something which allows us to put a man on the moon, so it, it clearly can't be impossible to prove your age online without disclosing your identity, which is really the essence of what we do as an industry. Um, so I think sometimes people do get a bit distracted by um, concerns about uh, privacy and data security and or the fact that we may not be able to go online and look anonymously for information you might need perhaps if you're LGBTQ plus or uh, you're in a, a, a culture where buying alcohol would be seen as a, a great sin you know people get very worried that if they have to use their identity to prove their age they could be exposed um, so uh, we need to sort of keep reassuring people that age verification can be done completely anonymously it's hard to talk about trends in the industry without considering AI or artificial intelligence which obviously people have started talking about a lot in the last couple of years but we've actually been using it but calling it machine learning for maybe five years as we've been developing age estimation, normally based on your face, but also your voice or a combination of face and voice, um, or even gameplay. There's, there's one company which has realized by the way you play a game online differs as you grow older. So they can use artificial intelligence to estimate your age based on you know, how you play Candy Crush, for example. So there are lots of opportunities to use the technology in that way. So when we consider standards, the obvious question is how often do you need to update them and rewrite them for them to remain relevant. Now if you've written the standards well they should stand the test of time so if they're not tied to particular forms of technology and they address outcomes and principles uh, then hopefully they will last for a long time. Now inevitably the technology that runs the internet changes all the time so the solutions that deliver to those standards will, will always need to be updated but I would hope that standards don't need to change very much um, in order to remain relevant over future decades.